Good afternoon and uh, welcome to the June 14th, 2022 Monroe City Council regular meeting. There is a quorum present, so now I'll call the meeting to order. And first order of business, we'll ask Julie Thompson if she'll give her invitation. Let's bow for prayer. Lord, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for this ordained institution of government. We ask that you guide us tonight, give us your wisdom. Thank you for our citizens, for our law enforcement officers, for all those who serve us with integrity and grace. We thank you for your mercy to us. We ask you to lead and guide all of these proceedings. We ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 First uh, item of business or public comments. No one has signed up, so we will move right on into our agenda. Then. <clears throat> Um, at these public hearings, please adhere to the following guidelines where you'll make things easier and better for everyone. Proceed to the lectern and state your name and address clearly to the clerk. <clears throat> Excuse me, be concise, not repetitive, and you've got uh, three minutes. If you've got a large group, then please designate uh, a spokesperson. And the first uh, item here, who is going to be doing the presenting of that? Carrie Midler, okay. Good evening, I'm Carrie Midler with the Planning Department. Tonight I'll be presenting an annexation, text amendment, and map amendment request. The applicant is requesting the annexation and conditional district rezoning in order to develop 155 single family lots. The total area to be annexed is 81.57 acres, and the total area to be rezoned is 80.15 acres, as 1.42 acres will retain the existing CCMX2 zoning. All of the calculations that I'll be going over tonight were completed using the 80.15 acres. To orient you to the site, it is highlighted in blue. It is located east of ML King Jr. Boulevard. Some other notable features, um, Union Academy is across the street from this site, and then the new Food Lion development is just to the south. The subject property is currently located in the city's ETJ and is zoned CCMX2, which is a new mixed-use zoning district and allows commercial and higher-density residential. The adjoining zoning is RMD, which is residential medium density and additional CCMX zoning. The applicant is requesting the conditional district, again, to develop 155 single family lots. The total area of the project is 80.15 acres. The density of this project is 1.93 units per acre. And the minimum lot size is 6,000 square feet with an average lot size of 9,503 square feet. The development includes 137 60 foot wide lots and 18 80 foot wide lots. The proposed setbacks are 20 feet for the front, 10 feet for the rear, and 5 feet for the sides. The project is required to provide at least 12.5% open space, which would equal 10.01 acres. The proposal includes 36.12 uh, acres of open space, which is 45.07% of the overall site. Approximately 12 acres of open space does fall within the floodplain, which is located on this portion of the site. And the open space for this phase includes a natural walking path throughout the open space, which connects various areas of the neighborhood, three separate gathering areas, which feature fireplaces and picnic areas, a playground slash tot lot that will have a sunshade and benches, and two fenced dog parks. Just to show you where those open spaces are, 
This is one of the entrances at ML King. This is one of the gathering spaces, as well as a dog park. There's another gathering space here behind lot 39. Another dog park towards the back of the subdivision. And then two gathering spaces in the tot lot located central to the site here. Street trees will be provided at a rate of one per 50 feet. There will be one and a half inches in caliper at the time of planting. All houses will have at least two yard trees. A 50 foot landscape buffer will be provided along ML King Junior Boulevard and a 25 foot landscape buffer will be provided around the remaining property lines. These buffers will include a mix of trees, evergreens and shrubs as indicated on the site plan. And then trees along ML King Junior Boulevard will be at least three inches in caliper at the time of planting. Five foot sidewalk or five foot wide sidewalk will be provided along both sides of the interior roads. And an eight <coughs> foot wide sidewalk will be provided along ML King Junior Boulevard. The applicant will be required to provide stormwater management to, street, to treat the stormwater runoff for the project. The stormwater will be evaluated and re reviewed if the project is approved by city council at the building permit stage of the process. The developers proposing the homes will be a minimum of 1,600 heated square feet. The proposed exterior building materials will include fiber cement, stone, stucco, and or brick. Vinyl will only be utilized for trim work. Four courses of brick or brick veneer will also extend up the face of the slab. And at least 50% of the front elevation will be made up of a combination of a front porch, stone, brick, fiber cement shake, or uh, window trim such as shutters. Each home will also have a minimum of a two car attached garage. All front load garages will have carriage style trim and or hardware that mimics the carriage style doors. And all of the 80 foot wide lots will be side load garages. Driveways will be able to accommodate at least two vehicles. The developers proposing that all streets will be constructed to the City of Monroe street standards and maintained by the City of Monroe. This proposal includes one entrance in, on ML King Junior Boulevard. This entrance lines up with the existing entrance for Union Academy that does have a current light as indicated here on this um, aerial map. And the subdivision is also proposing an access through an existing stub out of the existing Food Lion Shopping Center located here to the south. This entrance is on private property. However, the property owner has agreed to allow access. A formal access agreement will be required to be prepared and submitted to the city with the construction plans as well as recorded at the Register of Deeds. A traffic impact analysis was required by the City Engineering Department and this development will be required to provide a left and right turn lane at the entrance across from Union Academy. The development falls within the Walter Bickett Elementary, Monroe Middle, and Monroe High School districts. The Water Resources Department has taken proactive steps to prevent an over allocation of capacity as experienced by surrounding jurisdictions. So a phased water or phased sewer permitting and water meter <coughs> sets via the attached developer, developer agreement supports the implementation of the city sewer capacity use strategy for balancing residential and non-residential projects. The applicant did hold a um, virtual neighborhood meeting on September 8th, 2021. There were two attendees present during that meeting. Two rezoning notification signs were posted 10 days prior to the public hearing and official rezoning notification letters were sent to the property owners within 150 feet, again 10 days prior to this public hearing. The future land use plan indicates this area is suburban. Residential uses typically take the form of neighborhoods with uniform housing types and densities. 
However, a mix of housing types and lot sizes is preferred in the suburban locations. Multimodal connectivity between neighborhoods and nearby centers should also be emphasized and strategic connections to the off-street multi-use trail network are preferred and open space should be <coughs> preserved in both active and passive forms. The density for suburban residential is two to four units per acre. This project is not consistent with the future land use plan simply because they are at 1.93 units per acre, which is less than the two units per acre um, dictated by the future land use plan. <coughs> Staff did recommend approval of the uh, rezoning and annexation. Planning board did recommend denial with a seven to one vote. So I will go over some of the concerns that planning board had, as well as some of the changes that were made um, since planning board. So planning board had concerns with the additional traffic being added to ML King Junior Boulevard and young drivers in the area due to the Union Academy School. Additional concerns included the number of lots on this parcel of land and the similar house styles as other projects, as well as a lack of amenities. The following changes were made since planning board. They did reduce the lot count by five, which in turn did reduce the density to less than two units per acre. They did submit some new elevations for council's consideration, and those were the elevations that were um, presented tonight. The original plan required 25% of the front facade to be brick, stone, or stucco. The new plan calls for 50% of the front to be a combination of a front porch, stone, brick, fiber cement shake, and or window trim, again, such as shutters. The original plan also required trees to be a minimum of one and a half inches at the time of planting. The new plan calls for at least one of the trees to be two and a half inches in caliper at the time of planting. Additionally, trees planted along ML King Jr. Boulevard will be at least three inches in caliper at the time of planting. And lastly, they did expand the amenities to include more gathering spaces and two fenced-in dog parks. I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. The applicant is here as well. Okay, I've got one. But <clears throat> if this were developed by right, uh, what could be put on this property? So the property is zoned um, CCMX2, which is, again, a new mixed-use district. Um, the mixed-use districts are for more commercial and higher-density residential. So there could be potentially commercial or some kind of mixed-use development with commercial and, say, um, higher-density residential, potentially apartments. Um, and I believe that the um, code allows up to potentially six units per acre in the mixed-use districts. Okay. Um, was, I'm sorry. Anybody else got any questions? Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> Excuse me. At this time, I'll call to the podium individuals that have signed up to speak in favor of the project. Um, Mr. Williams? Hello, my name is Terry Williams with Withrow Capital. My address is 1341 East Moorhead Street, Charlotte. I just wanted to briefly address the council and, and the mayor in, um, in support of the proposed rezoning. We, we are affiliated with the ownership group, but also I'm, I'm here on behalf of the ownership group around the Food Lion Shopping Center. We own all the undeveloped out parcels there, as well as the small shops will be adjacent to the shopping center, and the additional rooftops will be great for the continued development of, the, of that project and uh, the rest of the corridor, and we appreciate it. And we, we hope that you approve the, the rezoning this evening. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Well, Samika, would y'all like to? Kyle DiPretoro, uh, Mayor, Council, thank you for having me. I'm the applicant on behalf of BRD Land and Investment. Um, I had a presentation to give, but Carrie, as usual, she covered every detail, so I don't think I need to go back through all of that. I'm here to answer any questions that you might have. I do want to just take a moment to just kind of um, brag on the planning board a little bit. I think we spent a lot of time, as Carrie alluded to, going through this project. We sat here, had dialogue back and forth, and really talked about what would work and what didn't work. 
as she mentioned, we made a lot of changes. Um, you know, we really worked hard to engage with the planning board. He was doing a very good job of representing the citizens of Monroe. They did not make it easy on me, I'll tell you that. It was uh, a lot of hard work, a lot of back and forth. Um, they gave us a lot of feedback about amenities. They gave us a lot of feedback about traffic, lot sizes, quality of the elevations, and really wanted us to bring something different. And I think that we've done that. And uh, I, I hope that they feel that we've done that. And I know that they recommended for denial, but we really did work extremely hard with them since then. Um, and I just wanted to raise that, that they are representing the, the citizens of Monroe really, really well. And I think we're headed in a much better direction. I'm happy to answer any questions that you guys have while I'm here. If this were approved, I've got a, a question. I, um, I'd like to see the caliper of trees be a minimum of three inches everywhere, not just on the street side. Okay. You plant an inch and a half, that's a twig. Yep. Um, um, would that be a, a something to, to put in there? Uh, I think we could do that, yes, sir. Any other questions for Kyle? Or? Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Um, Richard, would you like to, Richard Yearcheck, who is the chair of the planning board, would you like to address the concerns? I'll just, um, I just want to compliment the planning board. So I'm Richard Yearcheck. I'm chair of the planning board. I live in Monroe, uh, 3004 Manchester Ave. Um, the, the planning board itself has been working very, very hard to support you and the citizens of Union County or of, of the city of Monroe. And uh, part of that is what we just talked about, is that, you know, we, we take it as our job to do the hard work and the heavy lifting so that what comes to city council is a quality project. Um, it's, it's difficult at times because we deal with traffic, which we can't really control a lot of. We deal with the schools, which we can't control a lot of. But what we can do is we can ask for better projects. When we see a project and we believe it would be a good project in a good area for our city, uh, we want to make sure that it's the best <coughs> project possible. So just because a project is denied at the planning level uh, and then we work with the developer to then make it better so that when it comes to you for final approval, you get something that's different but significantly better than what we see. So I just want to thank uh, the members of the planning board and I want to thank uh, this developer specifically because they really stepped up to spend a lot of extra time uh, and, uh, and, and heed and take to heart what, uh, what the planning board was doing. And as you can see from where we were two years ago, three years ago, our projects are getting better. Uh, the quality of the houses are getting better. The amenities are getting better. And uh, I know it's, uh, it's a double-edged sword because if you've lived in, in the, the city for, for any length of time or your entire life, it's hard sometimes to see some of this open space go away. But uh, to the mayor's point, he asked what would happen if this was a build right where the, develop, where the landowner gets to parcel it off and, and build on it anyway. Uh, here, we get to have some control and some say and, and some input into what is going on. So uh, thank you for giving me a moment to speak, and I'd like to uh, you know, give my wholehearted, full-throated endorsement for this project. Thank you, sir. Okay, at this time, uh, <clears throat> I'll call to the podium interviewers who have signed up to speak in opposition. We have Mr. John Marshall, Headmaster of Union Academy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and council members. I, uh, this is the first meeting I've attended, and I was presented a form either to be opposed or supportive, and I was saying, is there one that says undecided, need to learn more? <laughs> and that's where I am. I have uh, represent a wonderful school, wonderful asset for this city in Union Academy. Uh, I've been the head for about two years here. We have parents in the room, and I represent the parents and the children, not officially, but that's my job and my calling is to serve those families. And my request of the developer is just to have an opportunity to learn more. I have not had a chance to uh, attend a meeting, have not met with the developers, and uh, representing our school and our community, which is right across the street from this development, 
My request is just to have an opportunity to learn more about what the potential impact of this development potentially would be on the community of Union County. Thank you. Thank you, John. Okay. There being no other speakers, I will close the public hearing and, and move to take action. May I move that the petition met the requirements of North Carolina's General Statute 168 31? I second it. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor, signify by raising your hand, please. Okay, motion carries in. Motion to adopt ordinance extending the corporate limits. Second. Okay, all in favor, signify by raising your hand, please. Motion to adopt resolution approving land development plan and compliance. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, raise your hand, please. Thank you very much. Motion to adopt ordinance amending code section 157.1.2.1, officials under the map. Okay, motion and a second. Those in favor, signify by raising your hand, please. to adopt ordinance amending code section 157.1.3.1 zoning district established. <coughs> second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Was that you again? Yeah. Okay. All in favor signify by raising your hand, please. Mayor, I'd like to commend the planning board for uh, their additional work in uh, bringing this one to a fine finish. Turn, turn your brief. We still got some more. Mm -hmm. There's still uh, next page. Huh? <laughs> oh, no more. This, okay, <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> annexation, rezoning, and water and sewer development agreement request. No, sir, it's actually Where's it? item six on page be a motion to develop an agreement. Oh, I'm sorry. I got you. Okay, a motion to approve development agreement. I second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Signify your, if you're in favor by raising your hand. Okay. Motion to authorize the interim city manager to execute any and all necessary documents with regard to the development agreement. I second it. Okay. We'll give the council first. <laughs> Which is what you guys okay. have. a motion and a second and signify if you're in favor by raising your hand. Motion to adopt ordinance amending code, code section 59.04 water resource development agreements. Second it. Okay, motion and second. Signify if you're, if you're in favor by raising your hand, please. Now I commend the planning board for their <laughs> job well. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mayor, if you don't mind, I, and I'd like to just make one other comment, too. Uh, this is a prime example of what can happen, will happen when our process is used. And I also want to uh, commend the developer for having the nerve to go back to a board that had turned him down and work with them and listen to them, consider them, and give us a better project. And this is a prime example of our system can and will work. So I do commend both of you. And for Union Academy, I might just say, I wish that we could have given you more consideration tonight or a longer period of time, but certainly I think in the future, if other lands come up for available or uh, development in your area, uh, we'll try to inform you. But, uh, Thank you for coming tonight. Thank you, Fred. <clears throat> and now, Carrie Miller will present the next item. Your turn. Or can I get uh, more detail? Yeah, Good evening. I'm Carrie Mendler with the Planning Department. Tonight, I'll be presenting 
Another annexation text amendment and map amendment request. The applicant is requesting the annexation and rezoning in order to develop 64 single family lots. The total area of this project is 29.2 acres. To orient you to the site, the uh, property is highlighted in blue. It is located south of Waxhaw Highway. The subject property is currently located in the county's jurisdiction and is zoned Union County RA20 and RA40. The adjoining zoning is also RA20 and RA40, again in the county, as well as City Conditional District Waxhaw Landing, which is the property directly east of this parcel. The applicant is requesting a conditional district rezoning in order to develop 64 single family lots. The total area of the project is 29.21 acres, and the density of this project is 2.19 units per acre. The minimum lot size proposed is 6,000 square feet, with an average lot size of 9,899 square feet. The development will be a mix of 44 60-foot wide lots and 20 80-foot wide lots. The proposed setbacks are 25 feet for the front, 25 feet for the rear, and five feet for the sides. The open space, or the project is required to provide at least 12.5% open space, which would equal 3.65 acres. The total area of open space provided is 10.07 acres, which is 34.47% of the overall site. The open space for this project includes a natural walking trail, pickleball court, gathering plaza with benches, and a shaded playground. To orient you to those amenities, the pickleball, pickleball court is located on this area of the site, as well as the um, gathering area on the other side of the main street inn, and then a playground towards the rear of the site, which will have shade structures. Street trees will be provided at a rate of one per 50 feet and will be one and a half inches caliper at the time of planting. All houses will have at least two yard trees um, and a 20 foot landscape buffer is being provided along Waxhaw Highway and the southern and western property lines. The buffer will include a mix of trees and shrubs as indicated on the site plan. Additionally, a five foot wide sidewalk will be provided along both sides of the interior roads throughout the development and an eight foot wide sidewalk will be provided along Waxhaw Highway. The applicant will also be required to provide stormwater management to treat the stormwater runoff for this project. The <coughs> stormwater will be evaluated and reviewed if the project is approved at the building permit stage of the process. The developers proposing the homes will be a minimum of 1,600 heated square feet, and the proposed exterior building materials will include fiber cement, stone, stucco, and or brick. Vinyl will only be utilized for trim work. Four courses of brick slash brick veneer will extend up the face of the slab. Again, at least 50% of the front elevation will be made up of a combination of a front porch, stone, brick, fiber cement shake, and or window trim, such as shutters. Each home will have a minimum of a two-car garage. All front load garages will have the carriage style trim and or hardware that mimics the carriage style doors. All of the 80 foot wide lots will be side load garages and driveways will be paved and will be able to accommodate it up to at least um, two vehicles. The developers proposing that all streets will be constructed to the City of Monroe street standards and will be maintained by the City of Monroe. The proposal includes one entrance on Waxhaw Highway or Highway 75 and the two internal connections to Phase 1 of Waxhaw Landing, which also has two entrances on Waxhaw Highway. Due to the number of lots in this development, a traffic impact analysis was conducted for this project. So the following transportation improvements will be required for this phase. It will be required to construct a westbound left turn lane at the proposed entrance for this development as indicated here with this yellow arrow. 
Additionally, they will be required to install a traffic sim sim signal with railroad preemption at Fletcher Broom and Highway 75. Railroad preemption is similar to what you see on Dickerson Boulevard, which basically restricts a right turn lane or right turn when the um, train is coming down the railroad track. So that is what railroad preemption um, means. The development falls within the Walter Bickett Elementary, Monroe Middle, and Monroe High School districts. And then an applicant did have a um, virtual neighborhood meeting on September 29th, 2021. There were also two households in attendance at that meeting. A rezoning notification sign was posted 10, day, 10 days prior to the public hearing and 16 official rezoning notification letters were sent to the adjacent property owners located within at least 150 feet, again, 10 days prior to this public hearing. Future land use plan indicates this area is suburban. Residential uses typically take the form of neighborhoods with uniform housing types and densities. A mix of housing types and lot sizes is preferred in the <coughs> suburban locations. <clears throat> the density for suburban residential is two to four units per acre, and the proposed project is consistent with the future land use plan. Staff did recommend approval of the annexation and rezoning um, to conditional district Waxhaw Landing Phase 2. Plenty Board had a split vote of four to four, therefore the project is moving to council with no recommendation. Plenty Board did have concerns with excessive traffic when combined with other projects in the area, the proposed amenities for this phase, and that the project had similar house styles as the other projects. So the following changes have been made um, since the planning board meeting. The developer did remove one lot to make room for additional open space and amenities. They also expanded the amenities for this portion of the, the project. Originally, the application was proposing a walking trail with exercise stations. However, the new plan calls for a walking trail, pickleball court, gathering plaza with benches, and a shaded playground. The applicant also submitted new elevations for council's consideration, which was presented tonight. Um, the original plan also required the 25% of the front facade to be brick, stone, or stucco. The new plan calls for the similar requirement on the last project of 50% to be a combination of a front porch, stone, brick, fiber cement shake, and or window trim. Um, also, the trees <coughs> did require a minimum of one and a half inches in caliper at time of planting. However, the new plan calls for at least one yard tree to be two and a half inches. And they also restructured the lot makeup. The original plan had 39 60 foot wide lots. The new plan has 44 60 foot wide lots. The original plan also had 26 80 foot wide lots and the new plan has 20 80 foot wide lots. I'll be happy to answer any questions and the applicant is here as well. Any questions for Karen? Thank you very much, Karen. Mm -hmm. Okay, who is representing the uh, applicant? How is the spotlight? Yes. Uh, good evening again. Um, I have a presentation for this one. I'll keep it very, very brief. Um, Again, my name is Kyle DiPretoro. Thank you for having me tonight. I'm just representing this project as well. Uh, I'm going to walk through my presentation very quickly, and you guys stop me if you have any questions at all. Um, so like the last one, we worked very hard with the planning board to address a lot of concerns, you know, improving the street trees, the layout of the community itself, moving the 80-foot lots to the frontage so that the houses didn't appear to be stacked on top of each other amenities um, one of the things that I'll point out on the amenity side of things is we got as detailed as where you'll see the break in the actual houses on that southwest side of the community where the road is actually coming in we sat and actually said hey you know it's not fun for a house to have lights coming into their house at nighttime so let's think about that so that's the type of feedback we were getting from planning where we we're getting that detailed sitting across the table from one another working together to try to come up with solutions for things like that so kudos again to them so this is a, a highlight of everything Carrie just went through, so I won't read all through that. Um, elevations, as you guys saw before, those are all the elevations that we propose here. 
Um, we're looking at, you know, some master down. This, this may be an active adult community, but we're not committed to that at this point. So we wanted to have some variety in the house types, elevation types, 50% of the elevations being stone, brick, front porches, um, cedar shake, anything basically non-lap siding, just to kind of break it up <coughs> and have some variety. Also some variation in the articulation of the building front, no flat spaces or anything like that. You'll notice a lot of dimension. We also plan to have side load garages on the 80 foot wide lots as well. Um, so I will just run through the amenities here. So. Um, this really is just a summary. Uh, that is where you can see the hardscape plaza with the benches. We pulled that straight out of uh, the new UDO, so the opportunity to have some benches, the opportunity to have some hardscape and some landscaping to really kind of uh, just have a gathering space for the community, whether it's multiple people, whether it's a small family, um, whatever it is, it's an opportunity just for people to have kind of a centralized courtyard. And you'll notice as you come into the community, it's really a central place for everybody to be able to see, you know, friends and family gathering there. And we've also got guest parking available in that area for overflow for people that are coming into the neighborhood. Um, the playground with the sunshade, as I mentioned, this is a sunshade, it'll be a fenced in playground. Uh, ultimately, like we talked about before, we removed the lot that was in that area so that you don't have lights coming into your house, headlights from another vehicle coming into your house at nighttime. We felt like it was a good way to break up the, the kind of monotony of all the, <coughs> uh, the rows of homes all together and also providing sunshade for parents that are just trying to escape the heat while they're watching their kids play at the playground. Um, and then we've got the pickleball court. Obviously, everybody knows how popular of a game that's become, so we want to put a pickleball court out there. We just like the idea of outdoor recreation, outdoor activity, and people being able to do things together in their community. Uh, and then walking trails. So we've got walking trails kind of throughout. You'll see that the lots, there's actually a significant amount of space behind the lot. So the, uh, those areas will be maintained by the HOA, and then we'll actually have the lots in front of that. So you'll have some really good space between you and the neighbors on the existing community that's being built out now to the east. And these are just some pictures so you can say, well, what is a hardscape plaza? So this is an example of that, um, you know, pavers, a nice grass area, some seating areas, uh, landscaping that's really well done and thought out, playground with a sunshade. So you have a, an area where you can um, sit on a bench and you can sit there with a friend and have your kids running around on the playground and knowing that they're in a safe environment and you're not out there in the heat. Um, pickleball court, I think we all know what that is. Walking trails, it's just a, a picture of it. It'll be mulch, it'll be maintained naturally, but that'll be maintained by the HOA. Um, entrance monument, this is just an example of the type of entrance monumentation, um, you know, significant amount of landscaping. It'll all be professionally designed and maintained. Uh, it'll be irrigated um, and just a good quality entrance monument to uh, really have a sense of arrival is what we call it when we're trying to put together monumentation. Um, and then traffic, as Carrie alluded to, I'll just rip through this really quick. That is the access shown to the property there, by, uh, shown by that little dot. And then, so this is the phase two right here. That is the side access. We are required to put in a 100 foot westbound <coughs> left turn lane into the community. And as Carrie noted, we're also going to be putting in a new traffic signal and a railroad preempt down at Fletcher Brooms intersection. And then again, just planning board impact, we talked about it. This is the summary of all those different things, the yard trees, um, the changing of the lots, uh, the improvements of the amenities, the elevations, moving the 80 foot wide lots to the front of the community so that when you're coming down the street, it looks a little bit more spacious and inviting. So again, just hats off to the planning board. We spent a lot of time working together to make these improvements to this project and I, I hope it's reflected here in what we've shown. And that is <coughs> I'll go back to the size of the trees that the mayor alluded to on your MLK project. Yes, sir. Can you do a three-inch tree everywhere? Yes, I'll do a three-inch tree. That would be awesome. Yes, sir. Sure. <laughs> Thank you. You got it. Thank you, James. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions for, for Kyle or comments? Thank, Thank you. you very much. Okay, in opposition, uh, Matthew Dimmock. How you doing, sir? So my name is Matthew Dimmick. I'm the owner of 918 White Oak Circle, um, which if you look back onto the uh, plan <coughs> design, this is actually my parcel of land right here, just south of the development. I'm the one that's due south, right behind this cul-de-sac. Um, my wife, Gina, and I, um, who are mentioned in this proposal, have been residents of Union County for 14 years. 13 years of that time, we lived in Indian Trail, actually in Fieldstone Farm, um, 
which I believe that this particular subdivision, the usage at least, or the city usage was actually designed, they use that as an example to determine that. So we're very familiar with the type of subdivision that's going to go in. Um, for the past year, uh, we've lived at our current address and uh, part of the reason we moved to that current property was the peaceful nature and the environment surrounding the home. Um, the large parcels of land in White Oaks and in the neighboring subdivisions are wonderful and then, of course we don't have an HOA um, because we're part of the county and uh, some of the homes there date back to the 1960s. I'm just simply requesting that the council reject this annexation of the 29.206 acres tonight. Um, I'm not in favor of the subdivision as proposed. Phase one had a large pond separating the houses from the White Oak subdivision from the <coughs> houses in Waxhaw Landing. Um, the houses in phase two will basically be built almost up to my property line. I know tonight we've also heard about a walking trail, but I'll get to that in just a moment. It's not in keeping with the environment in the subdivision where I'm at right now. Parcels 28 and 29 will probably only be about 40 to 60 feet away from my property line. And the nature trail is the only thing separating those particular parcels from my property. Um, I'm very concerned um, that there wasn't enough due diligence specifically with the community in, in this respect. Um, the 20 foot nature barrier also proposed by the subdivision will not provide enough privacy. Um, several of the fellow um, citizens that are also here that are in surrounding properties also um, will tell you that we have sunrooms and things like that that face towards that direction. And uh, 20 feet is not much more than from where I am to where you are, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm also very concerned because my current fencing on my property is a split rail fence that's about five feet tall at best so it's made to basically be able to be seen through some parts of my property facing this parcel are not fenced in at all so this has me very concerned about ease of access onto my property from the people living in the neighborhood and trespassing last evening i sent an email to uh, carrie mendler i requested additional information and comments in that email i also invited the planning board and the builder to come visit my property i would really like that I'm a strong advocate of property rights. I'm a strong advocate of property rights. Um, so I believe the builder does have the opportunity to go out and should, should be able to build there, but would like to also invite any members of the city council. Again, if you'd like to, to come visit my property and see what it's currently like before making this decision. And I thank you. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> I'd like to ask uh, Carrie, um, public um, comments that were sent out what was the response on that, please? I'm sorry, what, what was your were there, were there, did anyone respond to the... Um, the notification that we yes. sent out? Um, yes, I received two phone calls, one email, um, and one person wanted to make sure they weren't being annexed. I believe he's here as well, Mr. Horace. Um, or, and then there was um, another individual who had concerns as well with the buffering. Um, so two calls, one email um, total is what I received. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, being no other speakers, I will now close the public hearing and, and move to take action. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, I I can only have one comment. Yes, sir. Ditto. Ditto to this development versus the last one and the improvements that were made to it in regards to their working with the planning board. Uh, again, it's just a sign to me that our system does work. So, having said that, I will make a motion that the petition met the requirements of North Carolina General Statute 160A-31. Second. Second. Is there a motion and a second? All in favor, if you would, signify by raising your hand, please. Thank you. I'll also make the motion to adopt the ordinance extending the corporate limit. 
second. I have a motion and a second to extend the corporate limits. Those in favor, signify by raising your hand, please. Thirdly, I'll make a motion to adopt a resolution approving land development plan compliance. I second it. <clears throat> motion and second. All in favor, signify by raising your hand, please. You do have to go to four and five, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. I, I don't want to be redundant here, but I'll also make the motion to adopt the ordinance amending code section 157 dash one dash two dash one official zoning map. I second it. Motion and a second. In favor, signify by raising your hand, please. Finally, motion to adopt the ordinance amending code section 157 1 3 1 zoning districts established. I second it. Okay, all in favor, signify by raising your hand, please. I'm sorry, I'm not. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not Mayor, can we get just because uh, I think I mean, the mayor for ten voted late. I don't know if, if Mr. Carr was voting yes or no. Yes. So yes. Uh, Passed the six. I believe that six nothing. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Our next item is the 2022-23 budget. Um, you put your name on. It, dude. All right. This is a public hearing and. Now we'll recognize Lisa Strickland to present this item to us. Good evening, Mayor, Council. I'm Lisa Strickland, the Finance Director for the City. Um, the annual budget provides a basis for all fiscal policy decisions during the fiscal year. Staff has met with City Council for dis direction on compiling the fiscal year 2023 budget and has conducted a workshop to outline the elements included in the proposed budget on April 19th. Pursuant to state statute, the budget message was presented to City Council at the regular Council meeting on May 10th, and the proposed budget was made available to the public and posted on the City's website. The budget encompasses a number of recommendations that will foster workforce stability, address <clears throat> maintenance challenges, and deploy projects that enhance our community. The spending plan proposes maintaining the current general fund ad valorem tax rate of 50.25 cents and downtown muni municipal tax district rate of 19.15 cents. Other fee and rate revisions include a 3.5% water and sewer rate increase and maintains the current rates for our other utilities. Uh, pursuant to general statutes, the governing board shall hold a public hearing and adopt a, adopt a budget ordinance making appropriations and levying taxes for the budget year. Staff recommends that council adopt resolution R2022-50 and budget ordinance 2022-11 for the fiscal year 2023 annual budget. And staff also recommends approval of the internal service funds financial plan for fiscal year 2023. Mayor, I'll make a motion to adopt resolution and budget ordinance approving fiscal Actually. year. Here, if I might, Councilmember Kazaya, mm -hmm. you still have to hold the public hearing. Oh, I'm sorry, I got it. That's okay. Unless the public doesn't have anything to say, then you know, you're all set. Okay, <clears throat> no one has signed up to speak either for or against the uh, budget. So, <clears throat> at this time, you can turn it over to Lynn. Yeah, so at this time, I will uh, close the public hearing and move to take action. Motion to adopt resolution and budget ordinance approving fiscal year 2022-2023 budget. Excuse me, could I make a friendly amendment? Sorry. Could I make a friendly amendment? Sure. Only if the maker of the motion agrees. <clears throat> Do you agree? Do you agree to hear my amendment? Uh, what's your amendment? <laughs> if 
<laughs> and and I don't know that this is the right time. I'm new to all of this. And thanks to Lisa and her staff and every department head and everybody else involved in this laborious process. And I really did read or tried to read every page of it. Um, would it be possible to add back uh, a proposal to purchase 718 North Charlotte Avenue, um, which is the parcel there adjoining Belt Tonawanda Park? It was $410,000 into this year's budget. If that's possible, I'd like to make that as an amendment. Everything going on at the park is just stellar. And I think that would be just an added layer of, of, of class to everything that's going on at the park in that area of town. It's on page 65. You make it as a motion? Yes, sir. Well, I think um, he's trying to make it as a friendly amendment to your motion. So if you agree, it would amend your motion, but your motion then would have to be seconded after. If you do not agree to it, then he's your motion is still on the floor awaiting a second. I'm going to agree with you because I think that solidifies that whole area around Beck Tonawana Park, and I think that needs to uh, be cleaned up. So I'll second Mr. Carr's motion. Or actually, it would be it would be it would be an amendment to yours. So if you agree to it, then the motion is amended to add that. So your motion still needs now a second, second. with the amendment. Then I'll second. And you have a second from and actually, you have a second from Councilmember Thompson. But Sorry. Mayor, I believe, was going to ask the interim city manager to. Yeah, would you like to address that? Uh, well, you we should also we, hear from the finance director. We could handle it that way or as in other property purchases um, if we can work out the deal with the owner we could always bring that back as a budget amendment at the right time when the deal is negotiated it doesn't have to be a part of the budget um, it's just kind of a timing and what works um, we've approached the owner in the past um, we couldn't work out a deal, so. Well, let's go ahead and let's, mayor, let's, mayor, let's, leave it, let's leave it in there, but now you go negotiate to make it happen. The, the problem is, I would know from a negotiation standpoint, you've just told him what you'll pay him. <laughs> exactly. So what staff would recommend <laughs> is that you delete that from the budget, that from the, that is you, you uh, remove that friendly amendment and then that way negotiations can take place yes they have an idea that there is a pot of money but it does give you some leeway especially because the negotiations would take place and I think the finance director could tell you whether or not it would be possible to do it outside the budget we and we would say that from a negotiation standpoint because you to even say you're purchasing it without a purchase sale agreement or anything else we consider to be highly questionable yeah, and as with any property deal we would have to come to council for you to um, approve the sale or the purchase um, so it would be appropriate to do a budget amendment uh, for the purchase price as we negotiate and include the closing costs in the survey and any other appropriate fees okay. but it's possible yeah we can do it at any meeting yeah, that's how we've handled all the others, I think. That's fine. Doesn't have to necessarily Would you like to withdraw the amendment then, John? Whatever the right way to do it is. Yeah. We would, staff would recommend that you withdraw the amendment. Okay. That's all we have to do on that. That's all, so then just to make it clear, the motion is now just to approve the resolution on the budget second. without any additional changes. Second. Uh, we have a second to And you had a second already. <clears throat> all right, those in favor, please raise your hand, please. Motion to approve the financial plan for self-insurance fund for a physical year 2023. I'll second it. Okay. Those in favor, raise your hand, please. I'm looking at the finance director because while the, the motions that are before the council do not have the budget ordinance amendment, you had said to approve a budget ordinance amendment. Do you still need that? It's part of the resolution. It's part of the resolution. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for your support. We thank, thank you for you. Thank you. Great job. Everyone.
somebody said, I think James will go. I, we know the hours that go into that because I know the hours it took for me to look at it. <laughs> so, at least, so, thanks for keeping us out of trouble, okay? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. That's the big one. Thank you. That's the big one. <laughs> that's the big one. Okay, okay uh, next is a revised developer agreement for conditional <clears throat> district Cottage Green 2. This is a public hearing, and at this time we'll recognize, I said here's Stephen to do the. Uh, yes, good evening. Um, I'm Amy Cook. I'm with the Water Resources Department, and I'm stepping in for Stephen's um, presentation today. <coughs> um, for your consideration this evening is a revised water and sewer development agreement with the new developer of the Cottage Green 2 subdivision. At the April meeting, City Council approved a development agreement for the Cottage Green 2, a single family residential subdivision located along Old Monroe Pageland Road. The original developer, NVR Incorporated, subsequently assigned the contract for the subdivision to a new developer, Highway 601 Development 2 LLC, prior to the execution and recordation of the approved agreement. In consultation with the City Attorney's Office, it's necessary for City <coughs> Council to approve a revised developer agreement and adopt an ordinance amending Chapter 59 of the City Code of <coughs> Ordinances to reflect the new developer. There are no other changes to that development agreement from the April version, and the staff recommendations are contained in your staff report. And with that, I'd be glad to answer any questions you may have. So it's just some minutes. Yes, sir. Questions? Okay. No one has signed up to speak for or against the <clears throat> uh, item there, so I will now close the public hearing and move to take action, please. I make a motion that the developer agreement with NRS Incorporated approved on April 12, 2022, for conditional district cottage green two is null and void. Second. Okay, motion and second. In favor, raise your hand, please. Thank you very much. I make a motion to approve a developer agreement with Highway 601 Development 2 LLC for conditional district cottage green 2. Second. Okay, those in favor, signify by raising your hand, please. Thank you. I make a motion to approve a developer agreement with Highway 601 Development 2 LLC for conditional district cottage green 2. Second. Okay. Those in favor, signify by raising your hand. Thank you. I make a motion to authorize the interim city manager to execute any and all necessary documents with regard to the developer agreement with Highway 601 Development 2 LLC. Second. Okay. In favor, raise your hand, please. And I believe finally a motion to adopt the ordinance amending code section. <coughs> 59.04 Water Resources Developer Agreement. Second. Okay. In favor, raise your hand, please. Thank you very much. At this time, I'll recognize Interim City Manager Brian Bourne to present the consent agenda. All right, Mayor. Um, thank you. The City Council uses the consent agenda to consider items that are non-controversial and routine. The consent agenda is acted upon by one motion and vote of the Council. Uh, the consent agenda contains the following items. <coughs> Item 6 is a request to consider a bid award for AC water main pipe removal and disposal to SR&R Environmental Inc. as the lowest responsible bidder in the amount of $110,236 and authorize a 5% project contingency and authorize the interim city manager to execute all necessary documents related to relocation of a 16-inch water main inside the proposed Arbor Woods subdivision. Item 7 is a budget amendment uh, amendments uh, a is a request to consider approval of a budget amendment in the amount of $2,000 for 
for a downtown commemorative bench and to appropriate these funds to the downtown department. B is to accept a donation in the amount of $680 from Monroe Rotary Club to support the department's fire camp 1872 and approve a budget amendment allocating these funds to the fire department. C is to accept the 2022 Older Americans Act allocation from the Centralina Area Agency on Aging in the amount of $500 and request a budget amendment. These funds will allow staff the opportunity to equip and provide a active adult programs within the community. D is to accept the Parks and Recreation Grant from the United States Tennis Association in the amount of $2,000. These funds will allow staff the opportunity to equip and provide camps and clinics for youth and adults within the community. E are various adjustments are proposed to the fiscal year 2022 budget in order to recognize activity that was unanticipated and maintain budgetary compliance. Items eight is a call for public hearings to be held on July 12, 2022. We have a call for a public hearing to be held on July 12, 2022 to consider a text amendment to the City Code of Ordinances, Title 15, <coughs> Land Usage, Chapter 153, titled Minimum Housing Standards to Conform to Chapter 160D, Article 12, titled Minimum Housing Codes of the North Carolina General Statutes and Update and Modernize Ordinance Language. This would help bring us into uh, compliance. Item B is a call for a public hearing to be held on July 12, 2022 to consider a zoning map and text amendment request to rezone properties located along Olive Branch Road from M RMD residential medium density to conditional district Monroe Chase. Further to consider as part of the public hearing a water and sewer development agreement for the project. Item nine is request approval for a budget ordinance to receive federal grant funds and appropriate the necessary local matching funds for the apron rehabilitation project at the Charlotte Monroe Executive Airport in the amount of $17,780 for additional pavement marking and aircraft tie down work approved by the state and accomplished during the project. This grant requires the appropriation of a local match by the city in the amount of $1,976. Item 10 is to recommend the appointment of Gary Wilfong to chair and council member Lynn Keziah to vice chair. Being a housekeeping matter, the chair and committee members recommended that this matter be placed on the consent agenda for consideration and approval. Item 11 is request to accept a donation of surplus oil filtration equipment from Duke Energy. This item is no longer of use to Duke Energy and has an estimated market value of approximately $80,000. The equipment will provide a convenient solution to manage dielectric fluid particles. <coughs> 12, request to approve minutes of the April 7th, 2022 special meeting April 12th strategic and regular meeting, April 19th, 2022 special budget work session, and the May 10th, 2022 strategic and regular meeting. Item 13, staff seeks approval to revise the naming of the re renovated facility from the Phil Baysmore Senior Center to the Phil Baysmore Active Adult Center. This matter was presented to the General Services Committee on June 2nd, 2022. Item 14 is a request to consider adoption of an ordinance to formally accept the 20, 27th supplement to the City of Monroe <coughs> Code of Ordinances. American Legal Publishing Corporation has completed the 27th supplement to the City Code. The supplement is prepared on an annual basis, and this supplement includes all ordinances adopted 
by City Council through December 31st, 2021. 15, um, City Council approval is necessary for renewal of recurring service contracts for fiscal year 2023. Chapter 34 of the Monroe Code of Ordinances dictates that it is necessary to seek City Council approval on purchases in excess of $100,000. 16. We have a request to consider adoption of resolution to honor retiring employee Russell G. Colbath, Water Resources Director. Russ will be retiring on July 1, 2022. Uh, Russ joined the city on November 9, 1998 and will be retiring with 25 years of service. The resolution will be presented to Mr. Colbath at a later date. And I'll take this opportunity to just recognize uh, Scott Clark, who's here in the audience, who's on board and will be uh, assuming Russ's duties upon his retirement. Item Welcome. Number... Absolutely. <laughs> Item 17, retiring employee David Harry Godfrey, request to honor retiring police officer David Harry Godfrey by awarding him his service sidearm and adopting a resolution in appreciation for his service to the city of Monroe. Uh, here I'll just move on to the informational committee minutes, committee staff notes, and reports. <coughs> that's okay. Sure. Um, Actually, item... no, you need to go ahead and have them approve the consent agenda. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Yes. Motion yeah, to approve the consent agenda. <laughs> you create that problem that you fix. Uh, I, I cre <laughs> that's right. Okay, do we have a motion? We have a motion and a second. Okay. If you're in favor, raise your hand, please. Thank you very much. I need to remember that. Okay, now we'll move on to the informational committee minutes, committee staff notes, and reports. Item 18, um, items A and B are various committee and board minutes and reports. 19 is disbursement of fiscal year 22 city council discretionary funds. Item A is uh, disbursement from Mayor Pro Tem Gary Anderson. Council on Aging in Union County in the amount of $250. B is Council Member Freddie Gordon, uh, turning point in the amount of $1,000, a few good men in the amount of $750, and Hospice of Union County in the amount of $1,000. C, Council Member James Carr, Health Quest in the amount of $500, Council on Aging in Union County in the amount of $100, and the Road Police Department Explorer Program in the amount of $150. Item D, Council Member Lynn Kazaya, Health Pregnancy Center in the amount of $2,475. E, Council Member Julie Thompson, Hospice of Union County in the amount of $325, and House of Pearls in the amount of $325. Item 20, our financial reports for April 2022. We have an unassigned general fund balance of $2,755,571 and assigned general fund balance of $2,751,654. Item 21 is a summary of contracts awarded, change orders approved, and city manager's settlement of claims for May of 2022. Contracts and change orders awarded for the month of May 2022 total $205,293.77, $205, and there are no settlement of claims to report. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Here, will you present the next item, please? 22. Yes. Yep. All right, at this time, I'm going to make a motion to go into closed session pursuant to North Carolina General Statute sections 143-318-11, um, 1 uh, and 3 to prevent the disclosure of information that is privileged or confidential pursuant to the law of this state or of the United States or not considered a public record within the meaning of Chapter 132 
with the general statutes to preserve the attorney-client privilege between the city's attorneys and the city council and to consider and give instructions to the city's attorneys concerning the handling of claims and in accordance with NCGS section 143-318.11A6 to consider the qualifications, competence, performance, character, fitness, conditions of appointment or conditions of initial employment of an employee. I second it. We have a motion and a second. In favor, if you would raise your hand, please. Folks, we thank all of y'all for attending and, and appreciate your participation.